Florida Everglades. Home to countless species and nine distinct habitats spread over 1.5 million acres of subtropical wilderness. And right beside it, the largest metropolitan area in the state of Florida, with the lines blur where the sawgrass meets the pavement. The Everglades were drained to make way for the greater Miami area. Marshland erased and replaced with concrete and chaos. In order to drain the swampland, they dug out a canal system like a grid. Here, there is a balance between man and wild. The average person overlooks this fishery, doesn't realize the magic that lives within the city. There is a whole world beneath the surface, and when it rains, the whole city becomes wild. Rolling. We're gonna head out to the glades. We load up the truck. I roll up to Dee's house. Immediately we notice the trolling motor's gone. So jump on the highway, start driving around back and forth, up and down, trying to see if we spot the trolling motor on the side of the road. You know, we've made the lap back and forth like four times now from my house to his house. And then out of nowhere, we notice the cars behind us start honking. Guy pulls up and starts waving back and pointing back. And I'm like, what's going on? We look back and the cowling's gone now. No, and now the cowling off the outward. We get off the highway, turn back, try to find the cowling and hope it's in one piece. It's not like our day. Yeah. They try to see if that cowling survives. We end up finding the cowling and it is destroyed. Instead of calling it a day, we decide to start fishing the canals and see what we can find. Hey everybody, uh, Mark Rabine, Director of Development here with Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. I'm out in the streets of Miami tracking down juvenile tarpon with Eric Estrada, who's also a great supporter of BTT. We're finding these tarpon in some really strange situations. So I decided to give my buddy Mark at the Bonefish Tarpon Trust a call to come check this out. If you know anything about tarpon, especially the smaller ones, you'll know that they really like this kind of low oxygenated brackish water. And sometimes you can even find this type of water in the heart of a city like Miami here. Most people picture the Everglades or some scenic backcountry canals where you're finding these tarpon and for sure that would be where I prefer to catch them. But sometimes you gotta get a quick fix and these city canals in Miami can offer a lot of fun fishing opportunities and a lot of great habitat for these fish even though the conditions aren't optimal. So juvenile tarpon typically start their lives in these types of low oxygen brackish waters. Uh, around age two to three, they move out of these waters in search of larger open pasture, so to speak. One of the things that we're doing right now is a tarpic acoustic telemetry study where we actually implant a small device that allows us to track these fish for five to seven years. It's really interesting, especially in the smaller fish, how they use different environments. You gotta tell me when it's a hot mic, guy. Right? Oh, it's a hot mic. Hello? My name is Max Wagenberg. I'm a 16-year-old fisherman from Miami, Florida. The Everglades is a place where I could go and explore, get lost, catch fish, and have fun. Wake up at 5.30, get in the car, go pick my buddy up, and drive down the Tamiami Trail. When I bought my first car, the very first thing I did was load it up and drive down to the Keys. Some of my best memories, I remember the first time I saw a slot snook in person was on that very first trip. There is a roller. No, oh, two rollers. You see him? Max just got his driver's license and the very next day, he was heading down to the Glades. Caught all the tarp that we possibly could in a day. Holy cow. I mean, for Eric's sake, so we can keep on filming and catching fish, I bought us a car battery installment. Check. Tarpon, check. What are we missing now? Oh. 
What are we missing? Red. Chipotle. Yeah, Chipotle. That's what we're missing. Oh, That's what we need, some Chipotle. This past year, COVID kind of messed things up a bit. All the national parks were closed. All the marinas were closed. We couldn't really hit the water. We ended up trying to search and find these locations throughout the city that had tarpon and snook and all the kind of fish we like to chase. I'm rolling back there, but it's tough to catch me. Like so, you know, we just try to find little bits of wilderness within the city. Tarpon. Tarpon. I just seen two. 100% on the other side. Just out here. Trying to outrun these storms. The rain acts like a current flow and it gets these fish moving. So we start waiting, counting down. Do we have enough rain today? We find ourselves out here when we have the most rain, a tropical storm comes by and the water's flooded. It really gets the bite going. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Tick, 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 tick. Hit it. Oh, it. Oh. Yeah. You trout set. I did trout set. You took it out of his I mouth. I feel like a Guggen. I feel like it out of his mouth. I feel like a Guggen right now. Yeah. He just turned all he rolled. It's right dead center from you. Just drop it right there. Drop it. Oh, perfect. That's a snook. That's a snook. Sure. He's on it. Trip, 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 trip. Tick, 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 tick. Essentially, I follow the water. Going off road, driving through the glades. You know, we launched a savanna on the side of the road. Found this little marsh area and it was loaded with snook. I'm talking giant snook. But our camera guy got left behind. So it's just me and Damien on the savannah filming with cell phones as these fish are swimming up following the fly. We actually had a few giant snook eat the fly coming straight at us and we missed the hook set. You make the cast, strip, 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 and this 40 inch snook is following the fly all the way to the boat. in crystal clear water is a foot and a half deep. It'll really get your blood pumping. Yeah, I know. So me and Damien are just here dumbfounded. I had like four or five bites on the chase. I just kept pulling the fly out of his mouth. Yes, I know. Then it happened to Damien like four or five times. He sipped it, ate it. I know. And I didn't feed him. I know. He was coming. Same thing happened to me. He was coming straight at it. It's hard. Really hard. Meanwhile, our camera guy is nowhere to be found. By the time he comes around, the fish are gone. All right, guys, we're here on Barnacle Bay. Trying to get us some big old snoot. Some topping. Right there. So we end up making our way to a canal and we're just catching little tarpon, little snook. That doesn't count. You need to catch another one. We we're able to find a lot of cool spots and it actually became challenging. Like, what kind of spots? Where am I going to find tarpon? There's got to be tubes underneath the ground that lead to these spots because if you think about it, this was all the Everglades. They actually drained it out and developed the whole city, but the water had to go somewhere and so did the fish. These tarpon are landlocked, they're trapped. If we get a lot of rain, they open the spillways and the water starts flushing out of these canals like a river. Fry, the little baby tarpons are swimming inland, end up in these weird situations. Junkyards, in all kinds of locations.
they end up being trapped in here. So we'll find fish seven, eight inches, up to 30, 40 pounds. Oh, there she goes. She just spit it right there, dude. Oh, look up here. Look up here. Look up here. right here. He's still right here. He's still right here. Coming slowly this way. He's not too quick. That was too quick. Dude, that's it. That was so quick. So quick. Oh my God, I guess I just didn't get a strong enough hook set into him. <laughs> There's a tarpon, dude. Yeah. That's, 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 you running back and forth. Bro, I, I love that. I love that aspect of it. We found a few spots that tarpon like to hang out at. We noticed tarpon like snacks. So we don't even try to catch them at these spots. We just go play with them from time to time. Oh, thanks to this dude right here. Thank you so much, dude. You know, if you look past the chaos, you can find the beauty within the city. Epic, epic little fish. So while the scenario isn't very good for the fish, at least it makes for some pretty fun fishing. Not a whole lot is known throughout the state, and unfortunately, we're rapidly losing prime habitat for these fish. So while it is encouraging to see a bunch of little juvenile tarpon right next to a junk pile, what is their future? How do they get out of this type of really rough habitat? Will they make it back into the ocean? We don't quite know. Ooh. Ooh. Still Look at the wake, look at the wake, look at the wake. Get your rod. What the hell it is? That fish is gone, this one ain't. 